Hello, and welcome to Why Wait Till Sunday on an under-recruited episode. We are going to go over the three-star receivers that I like the most in the 247 composite ranking. So these are guys that, um, you know, they're going to still be relevant in big C2C leagues, deep C2C leagues, uh, even in startups as you get way on down uh, into those, you know, 40 plus round startups. Also freshman only drafts, depending on how deep those go. For Devi purposes, you'd have to be in a pretty deep, uh, long, uh, deep Devi league. Uh, obviously for dynasty, this is 2024, pretty far out. Um, but here's the thing, no matter what format you are playing in, even in dynasty, it's helpful to know who is the 2024 guys coming in that could pop right away. We just saw Keishan Boutte. We just saw Marvin Mims, who is fairly under recruited, uh, even though he wound up at Oklahoma. We saw Deuce Vaughn, a three-star guy, you know, shoot up uh, in value after just one year. So guys that could pop, it's still worth knowing their names. I was on the uh, clubhouse today with Matt Hicks, the FF educator, and we were just kind of talking about, you know, Devi and, and how to get into it for people who maybe aren't super familiar. But one thing he said that I have been trying to basically say for a while now that, you know, he articulated really well was you just, you kind of want to know these names. You want to be comfortable with these names so that when they pop, you can act on it very quickly. It's human nature. The first time you hear about a player, you're going to be a little skeptical. You're going to say, well, is he really that good? Is this fluky? Whatever. But if you've already built up in your mind what kind of player they are, and then once they're showing it, you have no doubt, this is what I saw. This is what I expected. And you can act on it. You can acquire them. You can draft them. Uh, you can go on a limb in your Devi League and take the guy who was a three star just a year ago, but you already liked him. Then he popped. Boom. Now, you know, this is how you get an edge. So, regardless of what format you're playing in, uh, I suggest this is a good thing for you to listen to, uh, but certainly most immediately relevant in Campus to Canton leagues. And of course, I am a co founder of Campus to Canton.com. Uh, the first website that is dedicated to the deep format of Campus to Canton. So naturally, this is something that I'm very interested in. If you haven't already been to campus2canton.com, that's C-A-M-P-U-S, number two, campus2canton.com. Uh, go there, check it out. We've got tons of stuff you know, that's always coming out. This video, of course, is going to be on there. There's going to be an article accompanying it. Um, we've got a league finder. So these are hard to find leagues because it still is kind of niche. But if you're interested, a guy on the clubhouse today was just saying, how do I get in a C2C league? Go to our classifieds, essentially, where people are saying that they want to get in a league or have a league opening and we can play matchmaker there. We've got a data app where you can visualize, you know, what Keishan Boutte just did versus what Julio Jones did. You can put them on the same graph and look at things, uh, you know, year out of high school and watch progression of these players who are still in college. And some apps uh, with some visualization on the data have that for NFL players, but no one has it, including all current college players. And that is something that really sets us apart. I play around with that on a daily basis. You'll see me tweeting out graphs from that app. And that is something exclusively on campus that's enough of that from my sponsor. Uh, but we're going to get into the top 10 three-star receivers on the 247 composite rankings. Um, and away we go. I'm going to have to share my screen here as we do. So if you are listening to this on podcast form, I'm thrilled. I hope you're enjoying it. But if you feel like you want to see what these players look like on the screen, go to the YouTube channel where we have uh, this in video form. And um, I cut up some clips of these young guys so you can take a look for yourself. First on the list, I'm actually going to go through 11 guys because this guy, Monterey, Monterey Baldwin, I wanted to talk about, but I couldn't quite put him in the top 10. This is a guy going to Baylor. He's five foot nine, 160 pounds. Baylor is his only FBS offer. They offered him late in the cycle. Um, not many people know a whole lot about him. In fact, I, I uh, apparently when Baylor offered this kid, he did not even have a 247 
profile. That's how off the map he was. Um, Rivals has him as a two star. And, uh, you know, it makes sense with, with Baylor being his only real offer. Now, what I like about this guy is not his size. He's 5'9", 160 listed. So he's going to need to put on weight. Maybe he'll grow an inch if we're lucky. Um, he did not have any other offers. However, he did run a verified in the tr- on track 10.66-100-meter uh, d- meter dash. Now, that equates to roughly a 4'4". Four four. So this guy's got verified 4'4 four four track speed. You can see it on the tape. He did pop for me even before I looked at his track time. Uh, I said this kid, you know, I figured a 5'9", 160-pound receiver, no matter what the stars were, going to Baylor, he probably was fast. So, I mean, I was just kind of intentionally looking at that far down the list, you know, looking at smaller guys, because I think a bigger guy, uh, you know, in the three stars or down that far down is probably going to be slow and lumbering. If he's big and was fast, hard time believing he'd be that far down the list. But these smaller guys, I think, can go unnoticed. Um, I mean, and you can see this guy, this is Texas. He played in Texas high school football, which, you know, any division is pretty good. Um, uh, I think it was Killarney or not Killarney. That's in Scotland or something. But um, anyway, I'm taking too long on this guy because he's like not even in the top 10. But but basically what you see on the tape is extreme speed, 4-4 verified, you know, type speed in high school. He does have good hands. Uh, You know, he's catching with his hands. I've seen uh, numerous examples of him basically catching in stride. And what I look for a big thing in receivers is catching and converting the catch into upfield momentum. You know, people can catch the ball and then just kind of come down flat footed or whatever. Um, What I saw him do numerous times is catch in motion. Um, and, you know, part of that's with has to do with ball placement and stuff, but, but really snag things out of the air, even using uh, his hands high up, catching the ball, you know, over his head, but but always able to catch it and convert it into upfield momentum very quickly. So I actually really like him um, despite I mean, he's almost as no name as you can get and headed to Baylor, but it is an FBS team. It is a power five team. And let's keep an eye on on uh that guy he's your super sleeper special uh you know kind of a and also honorable mention on the top 10 so then we get into number 10 this is davis mallinger from florida but going to west virginia and uh a lot of people like Caden prather for west virginia he's a four-star receiver kind of that big guy six foot two, three, you know, pushing 220 pounds. But when you watch Prather's tape, he's kind of lumbering. I mean, he just doesn't look twitchy. That's a huge red flag to me. I don't care how big you are. You've got to be twitchy at the next level. Um, So Davis Mallinger popped for me. uh, You know, his he does have a 100 meter time of 10.7, I believe it is, which really is a low four fives when you convert that to a 40 time. And he stands six foot one, 176 pounds. So he needs to put on some weight. But anybody who's over six feet and can move that fast in the open field is certainly worth my time. And I liked what I saw. You know, he he does catch the ball. I've got here on my notes. He's long. He's got a long frame. And this is one over his head diving into the end zone uh, right there. That's There's a couple of those on this tape where he's catching the ball, you know, diving over his head. So he seems to have like really good hands and a knack for kind of leaping catches, um, which to me shows really good body control. He, he can twist and contort in the air and still come down with the ball. Um, and he seems to have some good yak ability. I mean, look at that. It's a hurdle there. And, uh, I know that's all the rage for, for everyone to hurdle people these days, but, um, you know, that's another over the shoulder leaping grab right there. Uh, so he's not just speed and I, he does this move pretty frequently, kind of a jab step that he will do to get around guys. So he seems to have some, some yards after the catch type ability. Um, sometimes these taller guys just kind of catch and fall down or catch and if they're wide open, they can run to the house, but he actually shows some some uh, shiftiness and move. That's a nice kind of like slant post. Uh, I saw a fairly decent variety of routes and, and he does have 
uh, you know, the speed to, you know, at least beat guys at the collegiate level. See, so look at that. Look at that little juke step. I mean, that's kind of nice. You know, he's not one dimensional. He's not just speed. He's not just power. Um, he's not even just route running. He kind of does a little of everything. And I was pretty impressed I me mean, for a three star guy again, going to a power five team. Did you see that right there? I mean, he just made another juke on the far sideline. The video is not that great. But you can see that he's making some moves. I mean, I just, he seemed to be kind of like a complete receiver. And yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird. A three-star guy looks this good, but that's kind of the case with all these guys. These are gems. These are 10 gems that I found, um, you know, combing through all the three stars. I mean, really, I went all the way down until you start getting into guys going to Chattanooga and things like that. So I really liked him. Um showed a lot of different stuff. So that's Davis Malinger, my wide receiver 10. Then we have Keon Coleman. He's going to Michigan State and he is a physical specimen. He's a basketball player in addition to playing wide receiver. He's six foot four, 200 pounds. Um, don't really have a, a, a track speed on him, but he had some decent offers, uh, 49 offers uh, to be exact, including Auburn, UGA, Ole Miss, among others. So some big time programs. I don't think he's going to play basketball at Michigan State. I could be wrong, but he's certainly going to play football. And uh, he's a long, you know, leaping type wide receiver. Obviously he plays basketball. He's six foot four. You can see the length on the tape. Pretty smooth route runner. Uh, one thing I would say, I, I didn't see a lot of suddenness in terms of, you know, route running or kind of that quick trip twitch that you would want to see for creating separation, especially, you know, separation, uh, in short area where, where you don't, you know, you can't get fully up to speed and start using that long stride. I mean, obviously once he gets way out into the open field, he's a smooth mover and he's got these big long strides at six foot four. So he can certainly get that, uh, body moving up field. And, uh, but you know, the 49 offers, I think they were all for football. I'm not sure if they combined, you know, football and basketball offers, but that's really impressive. I mean, by, by at least 10 offers or maybe 15 offers the most of any of these guys, I just have him a little down my list because I, I didn't see any one thing that really popped for me in terms of, you know, blistering speed or really incredible shiftiness or tools that made me believe he'd be an excellent route runner at the next level. I just didn't see any one thing other than his height. And he is a smooth athlete. Uh, we just saw a basketball player, Drake London, you know, be a smooth, big jumbo slot for USC and he's been successful. So, uh, I think we, we like that for him. And uh, he's from Louisiana, so they did let him get out of the state, but um, his highlights were very long. But, uh, you know, he's a little down the list for me. He makes the top 10 here, but uh, a little bit lower than, than maybe some of these other guys for me uh, watching that tape. Next, we have Joshua Burrell going to FSU. And this is the second FSU receiver that I think is sneaky good. Uh, Dustin Hill is one of my favorites, and he's a four-star. Uh, so too, uh, too much prestige for this list. But Burrell is an early enrollee at FSU. Uh, you know, on day one of practice, they've already said he, quote unquote, doesn't look like a freshman. And you can tell that here on the tape. I mean, he really looks like a man among boys out here in high school. I just you know, leaping over people. He trucks people, even in that clip right there. Like when he gets up from the ground, he just looks like a, a monster. Uh, what I like is he did run an 11, 200 meter. Now that's like a four, seven ish, but for a guy who's six to two twelve to run a four, seven in high school, I'm pretty impressed. I mean, he could shave a touch off of that. And if, uh, you know, he's refined, in some other ways, you're talking about a really interesting prospect. Uh, should he turn out to be a, a polished wide receiver in addition to just being big and fairly fast? What I saw on this tape, though, he seems to have some tools that could uh, lend itself to the next um, level. You know, he's he's tough. 
he's very physical, so he has the frame, but he definitely uses it to his advantage. We've got a little slant here, you know, and it's not all posting people up. He does create some separation uh, on this tape and fairly frequently with some route running. Uh, you know, sometimes you see these guys and they, they really truly are just running downfield and posting people up 40 yards downfield. But, excuse me, he doesn't do that. Uh, That's a little toe touch on the sideline there. And um, yeah, he's got really good hands. Uh, Here's a nice one on the sideline where he's up high and grabbing the ball with two hands. looks like he's got really big hands. So, you know, I think in a perfect world, you might be talking about like, uh, you know, an Anquan Bolden type, this really big physical receiver who can, uh, you know, throw DBs around and really muscle his way to being like a possession type receiver. Here you can see him, you know, blocking, pancake blocking a guy. So he seems to be a a good, nice all-around player. He's going to help the offense in multiple ways. And that'll get you on the field, at least early, if you can block and, you know, they don't feel like they need to take you out on running plays. So, uh, yeah, I I like this guy. You know, he's a a little three-star, pretty unknown. But that FSU depth chart is just, you know, there is no way to say it other than absolutely wide open, especially at wide receiver. And so uh, that's Joshua Burrell to pair with Destin Hill as two of my favorite receivers in this whole class going to FSU. So good job, uh, you know, by by Norvell up there. J.J. Henry's next. He's going to Ole Miss. And I'll be honest, I, I was interested in looking at his tape because, again, like uh, a little bit like Monterey Baldwin, I saw J.J. Henry 5'10", 165 going to Ole Miss. And I said, huh. You know who was like 5'10", 165 when they showed up at Old Miss was Elijah Moore. So I didn't think a slow, small guy would be going to Old Miss. I figured if Old Miss recruited a small guy like this, he probably is blazing. And on the tape, he looks absolutely blazing. Uh, there'll be a couple of plays Uh, That's a nice hands grab up over a DB there. But you'll see a couple of plays where he just hits like sonic boom and, and, uh, you know, everybody else is just quicksand and he's just torching a defense. Um, And I did try to find his uh, 100 meter. (sighs) Excuse me. I've got to start taping these, stop taping these things so late. But um, he... He had, I think it was like over 11 seconds in 100 meter, which, you know, really just does not look like what I'm seeing here. I mean, look at this 90 yard catch and run pulling away from the DB as he, you know, even gets to the red zone on the other side of the field. I just saw legit track speed out here. And it it seems like he, you know, really doesn't have it, uh, at least according to his track records. So that's a little bit strange for me. Um, cause I'm going to trust my eyes here. It's Texas high school football. I mean, even if it's not the absolute best in the country, it's pretty good. And it's better than, a. I mean, w- the worst Texas high school football is better than a lot of high school football in the country. So, you know, this was at least medium competition and he just smokes, you know, defenses. Granted, that's a kicker trying to, trying to catch him there, but you know, he just, he pulls away. And what I want to see is when guys, you know, especially when they get downfield and they get ahead of someone, uh, you know, do they even do more than maintain that advantage? Do they actually pull away? Because to me, that is going to be um, a, a nice positive indicator for the next level to actually be able to just increase that gap as you're going downfield. I also saw some pretty good hands uh, and, you know, they use him kind of running into rounds and things like that, jet sweeps and whatnot. So he was a dynamic weapon in high school. Um, and, you know, I just, he looks, he looked like he had something to me and he's going to go to Ole Miss. So you got to like that. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to definitely take a chance on this guy um, headed to Ole Miss with, with what looks to be legitimate speed in his back pocket. This was a nice one too, kind of a, a shorter route where he he catches the ball up high with his hands. I saw that multiple times, being able to catch you know not just into you know his forearms or whatever, but really catching with his hands. And look at this. I mean, I don't know who he's playing, uh, but he's just 
ripping off these really big, long, long runs. And uh, yeah, I like him. You know, I really like him in that slot role for Ole Miss. All right. Next on the list is um, Julian Gray heading to North Carolina State. And he was a guy I circled simply because I did go, you know, down some hundred meter times uh, just to kind of see who had some uh, just requisite speed and athleticism to try to translate to the next level. This kid has a 10.4 on his resume, which that's like, you know, borderline four, three type stuff. And it, it didn't show up quite in his tape. I mean, it's certainly there. He has some long passes that he catches these long touchdowns. Um, I'm not sure that he has learned quite yet to translate that into, you know, game speed every time, all the time, but, but that's a nice ball tracking right there. He had to turn around and catch it on the other side of his body and certainly does have these breakaway, uh, you know, these big breakaway uh, receptions and stuff. Uh, for his high school team. So he's headed to North Carolina State that, again, like some of these depth charts, I like these, you know, this hyper athleticism going to depth charts, especially for power five depth charts that just aren't, there's not much there. So, I mean, I think a guy who can come in and be explosive uh, and, you know, create big plays is going to be welcome in Raleigh. And, uh, you know, that's like a 99 yard catch and run right there. He is an early enrollee. 5'10", 174, you know, you hope to see could put on 15 to 20 pounds, but uh, that should be doable for most folks. He had 12 offers. Um, Duke, Georgia Tech, South Carolina liked him as well. Uh, But I'm kind of betting on the, you know, the verified speed here from the track records uh, and, and hoping that he converts that into some more football skills. The tape is good. But yeah, I mean, 4-4 speed does not grow on trees, especially in a, in a decent size, you know, 5'10", 174, if he can get up to 185, 190 and maintain that speed, you know, we got something interesting on our hands. Uh, and you'll know if you follow me on Twitter and stuff, you know, I, I kind of do um, make fun of people that get all excited about 40 times. I think, you know, when you've seen it on the production and when you've seen it on a, a college field, especially power five team that I'm not, you know, I, I'm pretty interested in, but uh, not worried about a 40 time. But these high school kids like you don't know the competition. You don't know what exactly was happening uh, with the people they're playing against. And so I think just seeing is this legit speed that'll translate to, you know, an ACC defense? Can he beat ACC athletes? And and so at least says that, yeah, he can. You know, I think if you're dominating in college, you'll you'll have a pretty good chance of dominating the NFL. But if you're dominating, you know, some small high school team in South Carolina, you know, that's that's the the step up is just so, so much bigger. So I like to see that they just have like the basics for speed. Um, but yeah, four, four is definitely nothing to sneeze at. And we, we, we like that. So that clip was supposed to be J.J. Jones heading to North Carolina. But, uh, you know, the the picture got cropped, unfortunately. But he's a big, tall guy. Uh, early enrollee at UNC. He's six foot three, 195 pounds coming in. And, you know, pretty smooth for his frame. UNC is going to have two guys on this list, actually. So, And and they also have a pretty highly regarded four-star. So they are restocking their receiver room with a lot of nice-looking athletes uh, in Chapel Hill. But so two of them make my list. And J.J. Jones, the bigger of the two, uh, the stronger of the two, the more, uh, you know, physical of the two guys on this list. But... Um, he looks like a smooth mover. I mean, look at that, you know, posting that guy up and one handed grab down the field. You love to see it, but pretty smooth. He does make some nice, like, you know, cuts and, and, uh, changes directions pretty well for a big man, uh, accelerates pretty well for, for his height and size, uh, which I like. He had 35 offers second most on this list, I believe, including UGA, Georgia tech, Michigan, Arkansas, so some pretty big names. He was fairly highly sought after. You'll see right there on that last catch, you know, he he let the ball come into his body. Now, obviously, he's got nice hands. He We saw the one-handed grab before, but I saw too often kind of like that's another great hands grab there, but 
I definitely see inconsistency with how he brings the ball in. And, and there was definitely a, a number of times that he kind of lets that ball come all the way into his body um, and gets away with it because it's high school. But that's something to me that, um, you know, I really want to see catching that ball out in front of you with your hands um, and not letting it come into your body because that's, that's how it can get, you know, plucked away by a much better defensive back. But obviously very highly sought after. Um, you know, he has a couple out and ups on this tape where he just like torches guys. So he, you know, makes sharp enough cuts on the on the out and then going up where he just burns guys completely. And at that size and weight, you know, I love to see a guy who can get downfield. But, you know, it remains to be seen if he'll he'll create that much separation at the next level. But he's a big leaper. You know, he can be counted on in the end zone, red zone, I think, to do contested catches uh, if he doesn't, you know, fully get separation. But again, you see multiple times where he's jumping up, catching the ball above his head and got these big, long arms, too. So, you know, you can put the ball out of reach and he should be able to come down with it, you know, out of reach of the defender. We can go forward to the next guy who's going to be Sam Reynolds for South Carolina. Now, this this is a guy, um, you know, basically, I think everyone was in a bit of a similar tier. And now I'm going to have a tier one. So this is like the tier one. This is a group of four guys I really like headed to college. And Sam Reynolds is certainly the least heralded of all of them. He only had... Uh, five offers. The only other uh, FBS, I think, was West Virginia, at least the only other power five. So from, you know, kind of nowhere in South Carolina and um, is going to go to his hometown college. Uh, so that's nice in the SEC. So at the end of the day, he's going to an SEC school. Um, but he he's he's looking mostly like a slot guy. Uh, he's small, 5'8", but clocks in at 170. And you can see that his legs are, are pretty thick. So he's 5'8", but he does have a nice, strong lower half. Um, clocked at 10'8", in the 100 meters, kind of around a 4'5", 40. So certainly enough speed. That's totally fine, in my opinion. But you'll see here, you know, toughness. You'll see, you know, doing the little things, blocking on the outside. He's really aggressive, even though he's kind of smallish. He has a my ball mentality. He has a yards after catch mentality. I mean, he's always catching the ball, looking to turn up field and create extra yards. He's shifty, hard to bring down, actually, despite his size. And, you know, just watch right here on this play coming out of the slot. He does play a lot of slot. But I think he shows some nice like spatial awareness kind of, you know, just kind of settling down in the zone, but then catching it and turning up field. So it's like a little turnaround, catches it, you know, beats a guy to the outside and then just boom. I mean, acceleration. He just beat two guys who were already on the outside, you know, to get to the end zone. He reminds me of, you know for lack of a better word, kind of like an Elijah Moore. I mean, small, but looks very, very explosive out of the slot once he catches the ball. That first step after the catch is really impressive with this guy. Uh, And that's what really attracted me to Elijah Moore, uh, you know, after his sophomore year at Ole Miss. Is that first catch post, or sorry, first step post catch I really like. He does play some defense, and even his defensive you know, clips really show a guy who seems to be in control of his body and and understand the kind of where he is at on the field and the things that he needs to do to make a play. I kind of want to, you know, go coach speak on you and just say he's he's a ball player, you know, and that's just kind of what he seems like. Um, there's a seam route you're not going to catch. I mean, he, he has legitimate speed. I mean, SEC speed being clocked at a full on four five as a, uh, you know, a high school you know, player here, he takes a little toss out of the backfield. Seems really versatile. I I honestly think he's a playmaker and someone that South Carolina will probably utilize fairly early on. You know, they're losing shy Smith. They don't have a lot of other, you know, game breaking type guys. And I think Sam Reynolds actually can be a bit of a game breaker right away for him. I think he's an early enrollee. Yes, he is. And so he's going to be working with the team. He also was recorded on 247 with a 38 inch vert. The average NFL combine vert for a wide receiver is 35. So he is explosive. 
uh, has a legitimate vert, legitimate 40 time. You know, his athleticism is real. Uh, this is a little short kind of out route catching a touchdown. He just seems kind of like, you know, one of the more versatile guys I saw. Um, and so I elevated him into my tier one of three star receivers headed to an sec school. And if he pops, you know, he's going to be, everyone's going to forget about the three stars and he's going to be, you know, really impressive. Uh, his weight size weight, you know, is, is probably always going to hold him back a little bit from being like a true, you know, monster receiver, but I think he can be really productive in college and maybe, you know, have an NFL future, uh, out of the slot. Bryce Stevens. Headed to Arkansas, and if you've been watching these videos, Arkansas also had one of my favorite athletes turned running back in the whole class, and now they have my number three three-star receiver uh, in Bryce Stevens. So this is someone I really impressed when I turned it on. Their, their running back, A.J. Green, is also from Oklahoma City, So, um, or sorry, from Oklahoma. I think he's from Tulsa. But they did a real nice job dipping and pulling some some very interesting prospects out of the state of Oklahoma. And his tape is is really, really nice. This first play is fantastic. Uh, maintaining balance. He, he jukes a guy. He stiff arms a guy. And then it's off to the races. He is six feet, 170 pounds. He had 24 offers, including Arizona State, Iowa State, and Michigan, among others. He has a verified 10-9 in the 100 meters. So, you know, right around that 4-5-ish speed, which is just fine. You know, it, it's not that I want you to be super low. I just don't want you to be like 4-8 or above, you know, in high school. I know that there have been high school guys who are 4'8 and, you know, shaved off time and got better. But, um, you know, I I think if you're, if you're a 4'7 or so in high school, that's, that's more than fine. So this is, uh, this is perfect speed here. Uh, as of, as a high school player, he just shows a, a really aggressive approach to catching the ball. Definitely the, the classic, my ball mentality type guy, um, and I know that some people like Marcus Allen, who's headed to Wisconsin. And I actually, uh, DM'd, uh, boss and said, Hey, I've got Marcus Allen with, with verified long speed for you. And that I think is kind of Bryce Stevens. He's super aggressive. Um, you know, when he catches the ball, he's going to get yards after the catch. He's going to break some tackles. He's going to be, you know, kind of like a dog, you know, trying to get him down. He does not go down easy. Look at this kick return. I mean, he's already broken two or three tackles and now he's just continuing to just guys are slipping off of him. Uh, and this is kind of his, his thing. This is what he does, uh, play after play, but he also can win downfield. He also can win, uh, by skying up over a guy as well. So, Look at look at that. Again, juke, juke, you know, stiff arm, all that sort of thing. So you really like that. Pardon, pardon my dog here. Um so Bryce Stevens, you know, I'm I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed. Shh. Pardon me. Uh so that's a little defensive thing there. Uh, you know, pick six for Bryce. Really, really like what he's bringing to the table. I'll let you watch this out. All right. We can go forward. We're going to go to my number three, three-star receiver. We can never get to the next break here. Wow, this, uh, these highlights are really long for Bryce Stevens. That's how good he is. But I've run out of things to say. This has got to be a lot of fun for all you folks. Oh, yeah. This is Kobe Paceauer, um, headed to UNC. So this is the other UNC player I really like. Uh, and, and yeah, this is where he is. So he's actually the number two uh, three-star receiver for me. Um, headed to UNC and he ranked lower than J.J. Jones, who we looked at before, but he looks a little more technically refined uh, than J.J. Jones. Uh, he's got some punt returns on here, really showing some uh, you know agility and short area quickness to get out of the tackles and things like that. 
And he's still a pretty big guy, you know, 6'1", 175 pounds, I think. And, and that's just fine as a freshman. You know, these guys are going to put on 10, 15 pounds and get up to the 190, 195 range. And 18 offers, including UGA, Kentucky and Missouri. So a bunch of SEC teams wanted him. I think he's got long speed. He's a hands catcher. Um, his 100-meter time wasn't super impressive with 12 seconds. But, you know, it's not a total rule out for me if the tape looks pretty good. Um, cause you never know, you know if these guys took, took track very seriously or not, but he looks like he's got enough speed for me. And what I really like is just seems to be, you know, kind of a really technical route runner, uh, and, and looks like pretty good off that first step off the line. He just looks qu- like a quality receiver. I mean, that's, that's the best thing I can say. You know, sometimes these guys were looking for three stars, and uh, who can come in and contribute. And you want a guy who just looks good at everything, even if they're not like fully elite, uh, you know, at any one thing. And I think that's kind of this Kobe pace hour. Uh, You know, that's what we're looking at with him. But there's one I really would like to show you. I think it's like the last one. It's really nice out route that kind of seals the deal for me with him uh, because it just shows that, he can run a sharp outbreaking route, you know, and that's hard to do in high school. You don't see these guys do a very sharp 90 degree. Um, well, maybe that wasn't it, but uh, he does have one on, on tape. Maybe it was a different highlight film that I ended up uh, doing, but you just, I like to see that with these guys who can run a, a very sharp route. And so now we get to my number one, three-star receiver, He's also the highest ranked three star on to 24 seven. So, you know, kind of went a little chalky here, but I really like kind of in the, like, he's like a better Kobe uh, pace hour because he's doesn't necessarily have any one incredible trait, but he just looks like a quality receiver. Uh, I will say that one of the nicer things about him, he looks pretty sudden. Um, that's usually a term I use for running backs, but he looks like he can make these little, you know, juke stutter step, jab steps uh, during his route and on the line to to create some separations in short area. Um, shows enough long speed, and um, you know, he's his name is Michael Jackson, which is pretty awesome. I think he technically goes by Michael Jackson the third. To it not be confused, he's got nice size, six feet, hundred and ninety eight pounds. So you know, already tall enough for for anything you'd want and pushing 200 pounds as a a freshman coming in. He's an early enrollee to Southern Cal who did just lose two big time receivers um, in uh, ARSB and, uh, no, not Brew McCoy, um, Tyler Vaughn's. Brew McCoy hasn't done much. Gary Jennings is there. But he hasn't, you know, didn't do much last year, and I'm not sure what kind of a player he really is. The only really returning receiver is Drake London. I think there's room, you know, if Michael Jackson is as good as he kind of looks like, I think there's room for him to get some run early. Um, he's a tough guy. He definitely does, uh, you know, block on the outside. But look here, you know, like little 10 yard corner uh, to the to the corner pylon back there. He does a lot of different routes. You know, he'll do this little like sit in the zone and then make people miss after the catch, um, which I really like. He just shows a lot of a lot of knack, honestly, for the position. He's not just either blazing people or he's not just posting people up, but he's actually, you know, winning with savvy, winning with um enough speed and enough quickness twitchiness is what I see. And I, and I really like that, uh, for him. So here we go on a punt return, some editing mistakes here, but that's okay. The show must go on. Um, but yeah, so, so Michael Jackson, good size, good, uh, good speed twitchiness, and uh, I think there was some other things over here that I, I definitely wanted to get here, uh, you know, in the zone here. And then, you know, guy coming in to take his head off and he makes him miss and he and he gets um, gets some extra yards there. A long run here, uh, just consistently making 
guys miss, getting extra yards. Really like to see that. This is a little like drag slant on the goal line. There's a pick play, but he did, you know, catch it and convert it to a touchdown. This is a seam route here and just, you know, totally gone. Never really got checked though uh, at the line or anything like that. This is out of the slot and, you know, got some separation there, but the, the coverage there was was pretty ugly. I, I don't think that corner really, really attempted to, to guard him very much. This is a good block. Looks like a pancake block. That's going to win your hearts or your teammates. This is a little sit in the zone. And he does this a lot where he does these little like comeback curls. And then um, uh, that's our mock draft update. This was recorded on my phone. I guess I didn't get get rid of some of these pop-ups. A little sloppy tonight for why wait till Sunday, but hopefully you're still enjoying seeing these players. Um, and if you're listening, then you know you don't have to see all this mess here. But um, so yeah, Michael Jackson, I think we're going to come to the end here. I'm going to let you watch it. Uh, that was a nice route there. I really liked that. So that's a deep out and maintains balance. And he cut it off, you know, almost actually less than 90 degree angle. So that's good. I've, I've definitely heard, uh, you know, people that have played football at higher levels say that's a nice thing to do when you're coming in or out to kind of not even do 90 degrees, but maybe a little shorter so that you're kind of coming back to the ball a little bit. That makes it really hard for a defender to jump the route and, uh, you know, and, and pick it or, or break it up when you kind of have an even tighter angle than 90 degrees on those on those breaking routes. So, he, you know, I think he can do it. I think he can do this at the next level too. Uh, and I and I really like what I saw from him. This is, um, you know, again, he goes into the zone. Well, someone totally fell down. Look at that. Punt return. Getting to the end here. And nothing too impressive there. Let's see. What's the last play? Okay. So I guess that's it uh, for Michael Jackson. So to review, we're going to get out of the screen sharing. To review, we've got Michael Jackson headed to Southern Cal as my number one. Kobe Paysauer headed to UNC as my number two. Bryce Stevens headed to Arkansas as my number three. Sam Reynolds headed to S South Carolina as my number four. Uh, three-star receiver. And I think that's the tier that I think has the most potential. Then you've got J.J. Jones at UNC, Julian Gray going to NC State, J.J. Henry going to Ole Miss, Joshua Burrell going to FSU, Keon Coleman going to Michigan State. And that's kind of a big chunk of guys I think are you know nice and uh, just maybe a, a drop below what I see on the, on the top tier. And then we've got uh, Davis Mallinger, as you know, kind of his own guy at the end here, headed to West Virginia. He was way down the list, but uh, you know, kind of wanted to take a closer look when I saw his size and his hundred meter time, and then was actually you know fairly impressed with the tape. And he seemed more than just a straight line runner. He showed some shiftiness and some uh, uh, ability to, to create after the catch, in addition to some some acrobatic catches. Uh, and then we have the bonus eleventh guy. Mon Ray Baldwin, uh, you know, he's a watch list guy, even in a deep C2C. I think we're talking about a guy that, you know, just wait till week one, week two, see if he's getting on the field. This isn't a guy you, you have to draft him. You certainly can in like the last round, but he, no one, no one. I'm the only guy talking about him. I can guarantee you that. But uh, you saw the tape. He looked really good to me. Um, so, you know, judge for yourself. That's why I like to do this with the tape, uh, in addition to what I saw and, uh, leave a comment, you know, tweet at me, um, visit campus .com. I'm going to put this in article form in the next week or so. So, you know, you'll have that for quick reference. If you don't want to watch the video or listen to the podcast again, you can just go hit up that article and comment there too. Tell me what you think. I want to know, are you seeing what I'm seeing? with these guys, you know, digging real deep here. Um, but that's what we need to do in campus to Canton leagues on that campus side. Thank you so much for putting up with some of the technical difficulties and a little of my yawns. I promise I will start doing these earlier in the evening, but for now that is the latest why wait till Sunday. 
Uh, now I'm a member of campus to Canton.com. So go check that out too. And we will see you guys next time.